watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. Soldiers return to Fort Leonard Wood tomorrow after being in Afghanistan. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ashley Katz. New at 10, there is a welcome ceremony for the 94th Engineer Battalion. That unit provided infrastructure training and also served as an advisory group to people that are living in Afghanistan. Now, yesterday, members of the 13th Military Police Company, 92nd MP Battalion, returned to the fort. And here you see some pictures of their homecoming. That security team spent nine Nine months protecting commanders and accomplished more than 600 missions. Well, returning soldiers often deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. The condition used to make soldiers feel like no one understood them, but Color 10's Melissa Stern found one veteran is rapping to raise awareness. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, a report issued in 2010 estimated that 18 veterans die by suicide every day. The suicide rate is impacted by high levels of post-traumatic stress disorder. A man named Jeff Barilaro, also known as Soldier Hard, is using his love of music to educate the world in a very modern way. Hung up the phone, he wrote a note, and this is what it said. I don't want to live no more, I'm better off dead. I felt good, I forgot about all of my problems. Jeff Barilaro, also known as Soldier Hard, is an Iraqi war veteran who's been using his love of music to rap about post-traumatic stress and suicide. All you gotta do is stop in overnight. I was just created for my healing, you know, and then they just, uh, it just took off from there and it ended up helping other people. You always do come back different. Sergeant Louis Colasanti is a war veteran stationed at Fort Leonard Wood. You don't necessarily come back broken, but you are different. You know, it's a, it's a whole new world that you see over there that a lot of people don't get a chance to see. It took Colasanti a year to seek help. I didn't necessarily want to believe that, that I needed help with those types of things. And you feel like, you know, you weren't strong enough to, to be able to handle the problem yourself. He says Soldier Hard's lyrics really hit home for him. I thought his approach was pretty ingenious. He's acknowledging that he has this bad relationship within himself. Cause yup, this is wrong. Survive their battle, but die when we're home. Our soldiers are heroes, and we um, do everything that we can to help them. Angela Garrett is a psychologist technician at Fort Leonard Wood. She says Soldier Hard's lyrics actually make her job easier. It helps with the stigma part because it's one of their battle buddies who has addressed the issue, and he's bringing attention to it, and he's helping us get um, information out. Army chaplains like Major Kenneth Sharp are trained to identify signs and red flags in soldiers. Soldiers. Suicidal ideations is probably one of the most common presenting issues that we would see. All you gotta do is stop he says Barilaro can relate to soldiers. He has personally experienced it. He's been there. He's struggled with post-traumatic stress. It turns out Soldier Hard's lyrics are having a huge impact on the military when they were actually created for outsiders. I just wanted to spread that awareness and educate everyone of who we are and what we go through. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a normal reaction when we're walking. Since Soldier Hard's song Red Flag was released April 17th on YouTube, it has received almost 50,000 hits. Melissa Stern tonight. Thanks, Melissa. An Ozark County man is now charged with murder for the shooting deaths of a father and son. The killings happened last night in Noble, Missouri. The victims are 22-year-old David Hadley and his father, 56-year-old Mike Hadley. The suspect is this man, 52-year-old Leland Maupin. Witnesses told deputies that both victims put their hands up and asked Maupin not to shoot before he pulled the trigger. A man has drowned at Lake of the Ozark. Ozarks today. The Lake Ozark Fire Protection District says it happened near the Atlantis Island condos around noon. The man has been identified as 33 year old Timothy Walter of Camdenton. A farmer gets the credit for telling deputies about $2.2 million worth of pot plants. As we first told you last night, Lawrence County deputies found the marijuana earlier this week. Tonight, Color 10's Laura Kennedy spoke with the sheriff about how common these growing operations are in the county. A Mount Vernon farmer was out checking on some land Monday when he discovered someone had been using a wooded area of his property to grow more than 900 marijuana plants, and that's when he called the sheriff. 
The deputies confirmed that what he found was, in fact, marijuana. A Mount Vernon farmer discovered this marijuana growing in an unused area of his land about two miles north of town. Its value, more than $2 million. Probably one of the larger ones, single uh, finds that we found in probably the past maybe five years, maybe even as far as 10 years ago. 900 plants in various stages of growth were collected by deputies and highway patrol officers. This is a sample of one of the plants that was pulled out of the field and sent to the lab to be tested. Once the samples are collected, the plants are destroyed and the investigation begins. In this general area, uh, there were some uh, resources out there such as uh, water and uh, the fertilizer. Sheriff DeLay says this pot was definitely being grown to be distributed, but he says in cases like this, finding a culprit is a challenge. It may be uh, a pretty lengthy investigation, then again at the same time, it may be something that, that we never find out who it belongs to. The largest pot find in the county happened about 15 years ago. As many as 10,000 plants were found in a cornfield at one time. Finding and destroying pot growing operations is a top priority for Lawrence County. DeLay says he's thankful for the farmers' cooperation and hopes the public will follow suit. I say fortunately the alert landowner let us know where it is and hopefully somebody's hurting pretty bad right now because their crop's gone. The Lawrence County Sheriff's Office gets help from National Guard helicopters to search for marijuana grow operations about once a month. Laura, thanks. A sex offender faces child porn charges. He is accused of distributing images in Greene County. The U.S. Attorney's Office says 68-year-old Kenneth Stokes produced those images in the Philippines as an investigator, a, an investigator actually arrested Stokes there after seeing an ad online and agreeing to meet him. Stokes is a sex offender because of a previous conviction for statutory rape in Washington State. In neighboring Lawrence County, deputies accuse a man of printing 9,000 child porn images. They arrested 70-year-old Gordon Funk of Aurora. He is in the Lawrence County Jail. Bail is half a million dollars. Southern Baptist churches oppose the Boy Scouts of America's new policy allowing homosexuals. At today's Southern Baptist Convention, members decided to not encourage congregations to leave the Boy Scouts, but a resolution expresses support for churches and families who choose to do so. The Southern Baptist Convention has a national network of 45,000 churches and missions. Last month, the Boy Scouts of America reversed its long-standing policy to allow gay members. It continues to ban gays in adult leadership positions. A well-known Springfield building may soon receive a makeover next week. The City Council will hear development plans for the HERS building. The company wants to renovate it, creating luxury apartments, a commercial space, a restaurant, and a police substation. The company is asking the city for tax abatements and loans. The HERS building has been vacant since the mid-90s. Here is Jamie Warner with your Ozarks First forecast, and we're still in that warm spell, Jamie. We are, and we are looking at a quiet, quiet night across the Ozarks. Despite a cold front moving through, you know, you, know, you would think with the heat and humidity, we'd have thunderstorms blowing up along that front. That is not going to be the case. That front's still located just north of the area. Winds are out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. As that front slides south, we're going to see the wind direction changing, and you can see winds as far north is Clinton and Lake Ozark out of the southwest at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hot afternoon made it into the 90s just about area wide. 91 today in Springfield. So temperatures once again well above normal. Second day of 90 degree plus temperatures here in the Springfield area. Here's a quick peek at what we've got right now. No clouds and obviously no rain and temperatures are slow to cool. It's currently in the 80s across the region. By tomorrow morning the front will be through. Drier air will be working in. That'll allow temperatures to drop into the the upper 60s and tomorrow will be a cooler day under mostly sunny skies looks like a high of around 84 will the cooler pattern stick around will the drier weather stick around I'll look at that in your full forecast coming up thanks Jamie the weather was so good today veterans spent some time poolside the Springfield Elks Lodge hosted its annual poolside barbecue for the Mount Vernon veterans home there were plenty of burgers on hand, and the Hooters girls were even there to bring their famous wings. The veterans were fit that were physically able to come were brought in by bus. In tonight's medical coverage, obesity in girls may be linked to BPA. Many studies have associated the chemical with health problems, including 
asthma and behavior problems in children, but a new study finds girls between 9 and 12 with higher than average levels of BPA in their bodies have double the risk of being obese. It may actually influence the levels of hormones in our bodies like estrogen and testosterone that are important for maintaining a healthy body weight. BPA is banned in baby bottles and sippy cups, but is still in some plastic containers and in the lining of cans. To reduce your family's exposure, doctors recommend limiting canned foods and looking for products that are BPA-free. Also, trying to use glass containers, especially in the microwave. With government surveillance programs monitoring phones and the inter Internet, many Americans are turning to a book. If the NSA is tracking our websites, tracking our phone calls and stuff like that, 1984 is not that far behind. George Orwell's novel is famous again, The Long Wait, if you want to check it out from the library. And there is not a wait if you'd like to get your news on the Color 10 Facebook page. To find us, look for the Facebook icon on OzarksFirst.com and like our page. New information about the government's surveillance programs tonight. The head of the National Security Agency says telephone and Internet snooping has helped stop dozens of plots. General Keith Alexander told lawmakers he wants the NSA to be transparent and to protect civil liberties and privacy, but must also protect the nation's security. Lawmakers from both parties want to see some parts of these surveillance programs declassified to help explain to the public what information is collected and how it's used. A former NSA contractor leaked info about the secret programs. He's now in Hong Kong, possibly to avoid prosecution by the government. Fears of government surveillance is a big reason why a classic book is popular again. Sales and library checkouts of George Orwell's 1984 are up significantly. That novel is about a world ruled by a power structure that controls not only information, but also individual thought and memory. The Springfield Green County Library District usually has 11 copies. All of them are checked out with 13 people on a waiting list. Well, I think people are in interested in uh, 
the idea of Big Brother and a little concerned about privacy in the, in, on the web. And we see that here with people using public computers and concerned about is everything secure for them, you know, worried about is their information going to be out in the world. So this could lead people to be extra anxious and want to read about conspiracy theory. 1984 jumped to number 65 on Amazon's best sellers list. Jamie's back now to talk about some weather changes that some of us may like here in the Ozarks. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to dial back some of those afternoon temperatures. Uh, you know, it's been hot as of late. We've made it in the 90s the last couple of days. Well, how about 80s for highs? We will see that in the wake of a cold front, which will move through tonight. Will we see any rain in the next seven days? That, too, is in your full forecast, and that's coming up next. Now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. All right, another good looking night across the Ozarks. That's one thing we have seen despite the heat that some of you may not be like, and at least with the weather pattern has been quiet. And even with the front going through, it will remain quiet. Winds are out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. So balmy breezes blowing across the region. We've got some severe weather to our northeast. You can see it right here, sort of skirting around that ridge, which is still centered right around in here. Uh, these disturbances basically have to go around the ridge and, and then dive down the other side. And that's what's happening here across the Ohio Valley and we have seen actually quite a bit in the way of severe weather reports of hail high winds and tornadoes 
Uh, these thunderstorms you see right here in Ohio, uh, some of those tornado producers. Uh, and then what you're seeing right here is, is probably the development of what will likely be uh, uh, an area of high winds, which will probably spread across eastern Indiana and then eventually across Ohio as we work through the night tonight. Now, the pattern across the area, I mentioned that ridge of high pressure. Here's that disturbance. That disturbance not only is it generating some severe weather to our northeast, it will be pushing a cold front across the area. It's just at the front, even though, yeah, cool front, it's warm, it's humid, you're thinking thunderstorms with it. Well, the atmosphere is just not going to allow that to happen because of that ridge of high pressure. Now, as we take you through time, what I want you to see is this little area right here. That's an upper level disturbance, which is currently generating showers and thunderstorms in South Texas. I point it out because that will likely be our next rainmaker, at least widespread rainmaker, as it moves across Saturday night through Sunday. So we've still got a couple more dry days ahead before we're going to get into some rain chances as we get into the weekend. Overnight tonight, starry skies. Uh, again, not expecting any wet weather with that front. Tomorrow looks like it'll generally be a sunny day. There could be a little high cloudiness out there, especially as we work through the afternoon uh, towards western Missouri. Some of this may sneak in areas like Lake Ozark as well. Uh, Thursday night with drier air in place, temperatures will actually get pretty pleasant, dropping into the low to mid 60s for lows. And then on Friday, we'll see temperatures beginning to warm back up uh, into the upper 80s for highs. But I think we will stay rain free through through Friday and then we'll start ratcheting up the rain chances starting with Saturday but especially Sunday and Monday of this uh, upcoming seven day period that I'll show you here in the seven day in just a second. Now as far as what to expect tonight, temperatures, well they're right around 80 now. So we've got some, we've got a little ways to go before we cool temperatures into the upper 60s. But I think that will happen as the front slides south. We'll see winds becoming northwesterly to northerly by sunrise. And that will usher in some drier air. And that will allow temperatures to drop off into the upper 60s, uh, generally north of Highway 60. Still looks like a low of around 70 in areas like Harrison and Mountain Home. For tomorrow, we will see temperatures warming only to about 84 for a high. That's a pretty significant drop. Uh, from what we saw today or yesterday. You'll notice that change in temperatures and you'll notice a change in humidity as well. Winds also will not be as breezy out of the north at around 10 miles per hour. Temperatures a little cooler to the north and a little warmer to the south. But everybody looking at a bit of a cool down in the wake of this quiet front that's moving through the area. Now Friday, as I mentioned, a little warmer. A little warmer still on Saturday. A slight chance for a shower storm. Sunday, scattered showers and storms. Really, Saturday night into Sunday will have that possibility. And then again, Sunday night into Monday, the upper level ridge will likely try to build back into the area Tuesday into Wednesday. So with it, we'll see a drying trend. Uh, also looks like we could see a cold front push south of the area maybe Monday afternoon or Monday night. Uh, but as I mentioned, as that ridge of high pressure builds in aloft, we will see a drying trend and we will see a warming trend. And I think maybe Wednesday or beyond. We're looking at 90s again for highs. Wow, but it'll be nice to have a cool down. It's already, you know, hot. <laughs> it's yeah, only June. <laughs> it's our, well, you know, we, we had to wait for those 90 degree temperatures, but summer's here and, you know, we're going to have to deal with it for the next few months. We sure are. Thanks, Jamie. Mm -hmm. The 0-2. Fly ball in the air. Left center field. That ball is hit well. Garcia going back, and that ball is gone. A home run. Kansas City stages a royal rally. Dan Lucy's coming up in sports with highlights of that and Branson's new basketball coach next.
Now, the Chevy Dealer Sports Report with Dan Lucy. The St. Louis Cardinals continue to sign their draft choices today, and that includes O'Fallon native and Evangel pitcher Blake McKnight. The Big League Birds continue in their series in New York City tonight. Going into the game, Cardinals have the best record in baseball, 20 games above 500, and a three-and-a-half game lead in front of the Reds in the Central. Shelby Miller on the hill for the Cardinals, looking for his eighth victory of the year, but the Mets would jump on him early, one nothing in the first. Lucas Duda singles to right. Daniel Murphy rounds third, heads for home cards, throw to the cutoff, man. So Murphy slides across 2-0. Oh, then in the fourth, Duda rips this shot to right center. Just under the Dunkin' Donuts sign, his 11th home run of the season, and it was a 3-0 Mets lead. St. Louis gets one of them back in the sixth. Alan Craig would go deep to left. This is his sixth home run of the season to make it 3-1. David Freeze took a 20-game hitting streak into the ballgame. Longest in the National League, but Dylan G would strike him out right here. That streak would end tonight. New York would add insurance in the sixth inning. David Wright bombs this shot to center off of Shelby. That made it 4-1 New York, and the Mets go on to win 5-1. So St. Louis is now 42-23. and Cards will wrap up the short three-game set tomorrow afternoon weather permitting. Afternoon baseball in Springdale today. Springfield Cardinals opening a six-game, four-day series at Northwest Arkansas. And good start for Springfield. James Ramsey deep to right center. This is a two-run home run. And the Cardinals were up 5-0. The Naturals would get one of them back in the fourth. Northwest Arkansas's Ray Navarro would drive this one deep to left. The ball bounces off the Walmart sign out there. Matt Field scores. It was a 5-1 game. Cards muscle up later in the ball game. 6-2 eighth inning. Mike O'Neill, an all-star, takes this deep to right. A solo shot. 7-2 Springfield. Cards win 9-5. Kansas City Royals wrapped up their three-game set with Detroit and a nine-game homestand today. Royals trying to beat Justin Verlander and the first-place Tigers. KC going into the contest. Winners of six of the eight games on this homestand. That winning streak moving the Royals to within six and a half games of first going into the game. Cleveland in second behind the Tigers. Royals flashing the leather early in this one at the K. one nothing Tigers. Miguel Cabrera lines this one to right. But check out David Lowe. The diving catch loses his glasses on the play, but he holds on to the ball. And that would end the inning. Detroit would get more in the fifth. Brian Pena drives this to center over Lorenzo Kane's head. Matt Tuiasosopo would come in to score to make it 2-0. James Shields staying tough for the Royals. He would get Tuiasosopo swinging there. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Lorenzo Kane deep to left center. And this one is gone. A two-run game-tying home run. And we go into extras. Then in the tenth inning, Eric Hosmer singles to center. Miguel Tejada comes in to score. The Royals win. Hosmer gets doused with Billy Butler barbecue sauce in the celebration. It's yummy. Royals win 3-2 and 10. So the Royals now 30 and 33. Open a seven-game road trip at Tampa tomorrow night. Hopefully they'll bring their sauce. When Central Bible College basketball season ended, Kirk Hansen thought his coaching days were over. He coached the Spartans for 34 years, winning 737 games. But CBC's program ended when the school merged with Evangel. That left the 58-year-old without a job until Branson High School's position opened up last month. Hanson decided to give it a go, and he'll be the Pirates' new boys basketball coach in the fall. The Missouri Sports Hall of Famer will be coaching high school for the first time in his career. Kids are kids, you know, and uh, it's going to be a challenge, a different set of challenges, but a good set of challenges. So the level of competition is going to be challenging, but it's not nothing I haven't uh, done before so it's just the challenge is there and I am so excited. The puck dropped on the Stanley Cup Finals tonight in Chicago. Game one between the Blackhawks and the Boston Bruins. This game in overtime tied at three. Chicago scored two third period goals to force the OT and that is sports. Thanks Dan. We'll be right back.
Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. News will continue in a moment. Well, we are out of time. Dan Lucy's at a loss for words That's over right. here. It's not my fault. That's right. Jamie says it's going to be hot tomorrow, went, but not I as hot. I went long. We had a great kicker. We're not going to be able to see it. I went long, and I'm sorry. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>